Hello, I'm Shego Mana, and we believe that entrepreneurship is something we must develop in Africa and indeed the developing economies of the world. That is why we have this program called Let's Talk Business on this station. We want you to watch because we sit down with entrepreneurs and they encourage you on how to develop your own entrepreneurship business. Keep watching Let's Talk Business on this station. Welcome to Let's Talk Business. My name is Shea Gumana. Today, I'm happy because it's a fun day. And uh, you will know very soon why today is a fun day. The commodity industry in Nigeria is a very uh, thriving industry. At least, it's one of the fastest growing uh, industries in Africa today. And today, we have one of the leading lights of that industry here to share with us how it started and how they can move out. And how you can also be a part of this industry. We have MC Abe in the house. MC Abe, welcome. How are you doing? So I would say, welcome to the most exciting program on television. <laughs> this is African Broadcasting Network. Network. Good to have you. Good to have you. Like I said, it's a fun day because um, you'll be doing what you love to do. Okay. Which is comedy. Oscar, of Oscar. I would like to ask you, Abe. Many people don't know that you went to school. They don't know. So I have to let them know. Second so primary school, um, I went to two primary schools in Worry. One is Dogo Primary School. It's no, it's no, it's no more existing now. Opposite Mo. <laughs> then from there, and I went to Ejeba Primary School. Okay. Right when I finished, and I went to Baptist Boys High School in Ogun State, Abeokuta. Uh, I was in the hostel for like six years. Then from there, and I went to Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka. And uh, yeah, I, I now I'm in Lagos. So uh, we went through all. I went to Akara School also. Before primary school, I went to one Akara school in, in, in Igudu, Igudu market side. Yeah, to carry slates. <laughs> now I'm beat, you know. Okay, you study sociology, psychology, psychology, and now you are a comedian. Well, how 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 were you able to make that transition from? Uh, well, well, what what I read in school was uh, is very relative to what I do practically uh, because uh, it it reaches out to understanding uh, people's behavioral. Um, behavioral patterns and um, being relative to people. It connects you to your crowd, you know, so I, I, I maximize it, I make use of it. I try to study my crowd, understand what is relative and relevant to uh, the crowd at that particular time, so it will aid me on what to dish out, you know, to them. So I can't, I can't be talking about, uh, um, I can't be talking about burial in, 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 the, in the naming ceremony you know, or talking about divorce in, in a marriage uh, ceremony. So, so you know you know what to what what to give out, you know. So your your study your your, your field of study helped awesomely. When awesome. did you discover that uh, you were supposed to get did you, My, did you just stumble into brother I think I, I think for me I stumbled it because I never knew. My parents, you know, they've they've always, you know, given me those suggestions, you know, at home. They've always said that, you know, I'm, I'm always the one that brings the life out, you know, at home when things are dull and all that. I'm the life wire of the house, of the party and all that. But I never saw myself in that light. I'm, I'm, I was just being me, right? Even all through school, I, you know, when I, because when, I, I, I anchored, oh, sorry, I, I, I passed through the campus fellowship in, in school, Word of Life Campus Fellowship, right? I was the first national president. Right. So, but, but in, in school then, self, I eat. My members now, they, they'll be telling me then, well, now they'll be telling me that, ah, we always knew that you had this thing, but me, I never knew. You know, and when I was in Worry then in, in Word of Life uh, Bible Church, I, funny enough, I was in deliverance ministry. I was in prayer ministry. We do deliverance. And I know sometimes, I, I notice then, sometimes when, when we're handling cases, sometimes I, I, I laugh over the way some demons cry, you know. <laughs> I like, this, this is more funny. But, so I make trivial, yeah, I make uh, serious issues so trivial, and, you know, but I just enjoy my flow. But I never knew I would dive into this thing up until uh, I, was, uh, my, I was with um, my friend Godons then in Worry, and um, he had a program. He had been telling me to say, guy, this thing there your body, you do, just do the 
this thing i said my brother don't involve me i'm not a fool please i'm not, be, I'm not just stand and be talking we'll be laughing laughing at who don't they have respect i i i fought the thing you know he would only laugh me you know then he had i think he had a program this young voice had a program i think in port harcourt and they invited him uh, in church of god mission to come and anchor an event and also do comedy so he was not going to be around so he now told them i was going to send me so when he said I was going to represent him, I was like, ah, forget. I let it go. He said, he begged. I said, okay, I will just play, play. I will go. And I decided to go there late so that when I get it, they would have closed. When I got there, I got there about 7 o'clock. And to my surprise, they were waiting for me. When I came, they were like, ah, you're the one we were waiting for. Ah, you're welcome. Ah, and God told us that you're coming. All right, uh, uh, this is the program. I'm like, ah, you guys are also closed by now. And I said, no, no, no. Ah, just gave me the program. And I started talking. And I was just dropping, dropping the bombs. It's more, just being myself, actually, playing with the crowd. And I noticed they were all laughing. They were hitting their head. And I now asked them. I now told them to quiet. I say, now what time they talk? They make one of the laugh. They started another laughter. And I say, ah, I say, this work not finish. <laughs> but it was fun that night, you know. And we had some media people there. They worried then. So they came, interviewed, and, you know, got my numbers and all that. And that was how it started for me. You know, they, started, they invited me for some TV interview and I started doing Good Morning Delta um, program show. Yeah, then um, from there, the fact it was on stage, I got, it was on set rather, that I got my name. Because they now asked me, now you are, you, you are, uh, you are a comedian, what's, what's your stage name? It was there and then I just coined MC Abbey. <laughs> How? I just noticed, okay, fine, I want to, I want to. I want to be a good master compare master of ceremony, right? To uh, bring structure and orderliness to events and all that. So that's that's a good job of an MC. And uh, my name is also Abiodun. I'm an Afghan actually. I'm, I'm I'm a Yoruba boy. My mom is Urobo. So uh, Yoruba and Urobo mixed together. I'm like an, yes, I'm a mixed breed of Afghans, you know. But I was born in Wari, grew up where I lived my life there too. So and so I just coined from Abiodun. I coined Abi. I just, I said, what's, what's your thing? I said, mm, my name is MC Abbey. Oh, nice. Ah, that's, I said, yes. So it just stuck on me till date. You know, and that's how we started. And I quickly went to do my complimentary card. I was giving to people, you know, you could call me for your event, you know. Because when I left that church that day, I was given an envelope. A God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> a friendly God bless you envelope that will lift your spirit to the next level. I paid my tithe. Hallelujah. Wow. Glory. And, and, and it was, I think it was 8,000 naira. That was my first pay. That's like 80,000 naira. Then now, I mean, so it, was, it was big to me. I was like, wow. This was like 2002. I was like, wow, are you kidding me? 8K. Just to do, I said, forget. This work will die here. <laughs> and that's how it started. And I just went to, I gave my mommy some. I said, mommy, yeah, go arrange banga superstar. Go you arrange yourself, you know, sharply, sharply, sharply. And funny enough, then I, I, I was working with uh, with Shell as a safety officer. Well, I contracted with Shell, um, and um, I, I did that for a year. But I was not really finding fulfillment in it because it wasn't me. I, all those paperwork, I don't I don't really fancy them. You know, I, I noticed that my my colleagues will always come to my table during break time and would just chit chat, would laugh, and and I was a safety officer. It was so opposite my kind of life, looking for unsafe condition, unsafe act because the full country. It's unsafe. So how will I be creating enmity? You know, it was not funny. So I had to resign. You know, and uh, I said, let me pursue this thing. And it's um, this is going to twelve years now. It's 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 paying off. It's paying off. I got bills. I'm paying. I got married to a beautiful wife. Two beautiful kids. I have properties of my name. I have cars. Uh, what else? Everything working for you. Oh, yeah, That's above all, I'm you're Jesus. You're fulfilling purpose. Your purpose. That's right. I'll ask a very trivial question now. Your first paycheck, 8,000 naira. 12 years down the line. <laughs> you want to know how much I'm earning now? Uh, brethren, <laughs> brethren. You know, it's a public domain. It's a, as we are public people, we are not really, uh, but we are blessed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we are blessed. We're blessed. Actually, we don't have, uh, right now, I charge relatively. I'm very humble. I don't want to say it out. You're, very, you're pushing me too hard. You know, not much, not much. Within within the space of, it depends, from 500 to 1.5, within that range. And it depends on um, on the event, whether it's corporate or social. So we know how to how to um, put a mark, the markation. But we are good. Please. Fine.
from from five to one point five. A young person watching you out there now will say, "Oh, MC is getting MC Abi is getting so much for doing what he loves to do." And they have found out that from what you've said, growing up, all the things you said that happened to you about you being able to bring people together, you been able, uh, being able to be the life of the party, they are doing all of that. But they don't know how to turn this gift that they found out that they have into a talent and to make money from it. How were you able to turn yours from? Because it's not just in doing the jokes and all of that. You were able to do some other things. Oh, yes. Run us yes. through the steps. Yes. Now, now, the whole lot. See, talent is not just enough. All right? If you just have it and you keep it, you can it, you can't. That's, you, you're not fit, not rich, nothing. You just die there. All right? That there are a lot of things that you put into place. Uh, uh, you having a talent is one, but you have to develop the skill to, uh, to maximize that talent. The skill in enhancing that talent, that's where the work is, right? For me, what I, what I did uh, normally or naturally was I had to go and study. I had to go and study what it takes to bring this thing out. I studied from other... Um, uh, uh, foreigners that so I've gone ahead I went online several times I was checking out okay what's the what are the nitty-gritties what does it take to be a good master compare because I was merging both together merging both together what does it take to be a good master compare how do I improve in my uh, communication skill I had to go to a school of poise right to learn diction to learn how to speak right learn how to uh, um, uh, manage my crowd you know, I had to learn all those things uh, because uh, naturally they are in me because uh, I've, I've been, I've been um, a public person right from, from childbirth, uh, right from primary school, I would say, as a prefect from primary school, secondary school prefect, I was always speaking to the crowd. So I'm already used to the crowd, but I need to learn the act and the art of communicating effectively. And, and speaking effectively uh, because there's even between you knowing or having a joke right and you delivering it delivery is key I can deliver a joke to you one-on-one -on -one, but it's different from when I deliver it to a crowd you know some people are very good they're good comedians off stage you know they can they can crack you up one-on-one -on -one. but once they climb say home microphone see crowd see people head see one person your his for that place all their morale don't drop you know, so I need to learn all, all that. It, it, it enhances my skill. Then above all, you know, uh, yeah, you, you keep working. You keep working on yourself. Above all, I have to be under the covering of God, right? Because if it's not, if it's not God, it's not good, right? I had to be under. In, it, there's, there, there is no need you pursuing what you're not passionate about, right? The reason why I could pursue it, and I'm still pursuing it because it's my passion. What was my passion? My passion is to see people happy and laugh. I want to see them laugh away their pains, laugh away their sorrows, laugh and be happy. I want to see events well coordinated and organized and have fun. Fun defines me. I love having fun. Godly fun. Right, so that's my passion, and it still drives me till tomorrow. I can be on a sick bed. You just wake me up and say, "There's one event that they'll need you to." You, the way I will revive it will shock you. Now, and and this thing has I've had testimonies from my performance. Somebody saw me in, in, in a church some time ago and, and told me how she was healed. Right, how, how she was healed. She she had a uh, 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 kidney problem, you know, and um, she was she was bound for an for an operation to go and change her kidney and all that and I, I in the course of her laughing and i went to pull her up i told her to laugh and shake her body and dance and unknown to, unknown to me just that touch brought a healing and that was it and i've heard short testimonies you know i i, I had so problem i laughed and i got got delivered i've heard so it encourages that's my that's my dream under the covering of God, it's not just empty air. It, you have to be have to under the covering. If, if you're not for God, you're for the devil. So you have to know who's covering you. So uh, it, bringing it under God's covering, it's it's awesome. So that 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 works for me. So basically, build your skills, develop yourself. You know, it, it, it you go you go far. That's right. That's right. We, we go, I won't let you go yet. Uh, when we go on this break and come back, we will talk about some other things. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, um, MC Abe will tell you how to develop your passion, especially if your passion is in comedy. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Let's Talk Business.
Welcome back to Let's Talk Business. We are looking at the comedy industry today. I will have one of Nigeria's finest comedians in the house, and he has been telling us uh, many of the things you needed to know about this industry, how he has been able to groom himself and grow himself, and how you also can be able to do this. We have MCRB in the house. Thank you, sir, for being with us. You've told us about how you started having a covering and following your passion. But, you know, what we always see on this program, we have people who are stuck in their jobs, who are trained engineers but working in banks, who don't know what to do, who are just receiving a paycheck because at the end of the month I have to pay my rent, not because they love what they are doing. You are doing what you love now, so you could do this forever. Alibaba is doing what he loves, so he's doing it forever. What would you say to this person in the bank that is stuck, that is watching you today to say, ah, look at MCRB on Let's Talk Business. What would you say to that person? Run for your life. <laughs> Run for your life. Why, why do I say so? Listen, life is all about purpose. And purpose is given for fulfillment. Purpose defines you. Um, if you want to be all you are born to be, you have to first know what you are born to be. Right? Um, I, I do a, a, a bit of motivational speaking too alongside Intel. Yeah. So, and this, this, this is actually my field on helping people discover their life's vocation, what you are born to do, right? There's a difference between your interest and, and um, your passion, what you are interested in. Many of you are doing things today out of interest. For, let me give you a, a vivid example. Um, I love playing football, right? And I, of course, I am, I'm sure you love playing football too. It's just, it's just an interest that I have. But it's not my passion, so I won't pursue my interest in football. I would rather pursue my passion because uh, that is where my, my life's energy comes from. That's what fuels me, right? Okocha has a passion for football. He pursued it. Kano Wankwa had a passion, was determined. <laughs> he was determined and had a passion for football. He pursued it in spite of his condition. So there are different between you having um, an interest in a thing and having a passion. Many, there are a lot of comedians today that have, uh, they're just interested. They have interest because of, the money. because of the money. Because what they see, ah, the fame, the money, the, the connections. Because of that, they're just interested. But it's not, it's not in them. The giftings, the talent, the raw talent is not in them. You know, so they can, the, the, the interest can take them um, uh, to a, a level, but it will, it will drown them. It, they can't go further. Now, there are people out there, like you said, working in the banks, working in different uh, uh, corporations that are not designed for where they are. They are not pursuing their, that, that's not their passion. They are just there by happenstance. You know, no job, they are more your duties or more your whole side. There's no problem when you're building a house, there's something called the scaffolds and the pillars. There's no problem you, you, you holding on to your scaffolds for a while, but don't make your scaffolds your pillars. The scaffolds are supposed to hold the building temporarily, that's right. right? Until the pillar, the pillar is strong enough to carry the building, you take off the scaffold. So you, you can start off. Like that, then you're by the wayside, you're building your pillars. And when you know your pillar is strong enough, you have to take off the scaffold and trust in the strength of your pillar to hold your building. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So and that's how it works. If if you don't if you don't leave your comfort zone of the paychecks you're getting and the small susu here and there, that you are struggling every time is Monday, you say, Oh God, Monday again. When it's Friday, ah, oh, thank God it's Friday. You know, you're not excited going to going to do your work. If you don't leave that comfort, that zone, you will drown. You will, you will age in time. You will, in fact, you will expire. So I urge you to pursue your passion. First of all, discover what is that thing that makes you thick. What is that thing that burns in you, that makes you, the, the fire in you that won't quench. You, I, I, I don't get me. That is your passion. That thing that, that, thing that you, can, you can do, right, even if you're not being paid for. You can do it with joy. You find fulfillment. And there's a way I ask, I, I, I help people discover this. I ask a simple question. If everybody is being paid the same amount of money, both the bricklayer, the lawyer, the banker, the doctor, the, the shoemaker, man. the get man, they are paying the same amount of money for working. So money is no more the factor now, you know, for the work. What will you do? 
now you, 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 that means you, you are the reason why you are working now is not just because of money because money is ever ever ending the same thing so what will you do obviously you will do that thing that you enjoy doing that thing that you find fulfillment in that thing that brings your glow that you know the fish in the water you know that 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 your environment your creative environment you want to bring all about you so that thing that thing if you discover that thing or when you discover that thing that's what you should pursue and money greatness pursues passion whether you like it or yes so you will find out your passion find it this and money will pursue you it will pursue you, pursue you. Mm. Because, because money is not what the focus is i am i am i having fun in this yes i am am i enjoying this yes you are am i happy in this yes you are then other things that you learn along the line you know are, are how to now unless your gifts how to make it uh, uh, commercial commercial uh, com commercially, viable. commercially oh, 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 oh brethren how to make it commercially viable yes all the things that the things you learn along the line those are added value how to add value to your skill uh, to your talent how to uh, uh, expand your course how to reinvent yourself all that other things you would learn along the line but first of all if you don't discover your passion all those are useless Okay, right. perfect. Uh, I want to bring something that you talked about. Money is not, you have to pursue passion and passion pursues money. You mentioned the role of, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name now? Godon yeah. in, in oh, being yes. able to pull you. So I, want, I wanted to bring a point out. What is the role of mentoring in all of this? Oh. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good comedian in school, but I need to get to the next level. Yeah. What, what is oh, the role 100%. Of now, now, it's uh, mentorship is it's key. I, I was I was said I just forgot. Uh, mentorship is key to climb. You, you need, uh, there was a statement that um, uh, Bishop uh, Oedipo said some time ago. He said, if you stand in the shoulders of prophets, you will make profits. Yeah. Uh, and uh, mentorship is key. There are people that have gone ahead of you in that course. You need to determine who your mentor is or who they are. You need to determine them. It's not just everybody. Right? It's not everybody you just see. Ah, that guy is my mentor. Or, um, no. Like, I, like for me, I'm into this business, right? I'm a comedian. But I don't have all the senior colleagues, all that have gone ahead of me. I don't have all of them as my mentor. I look at those that are relative and relevant to my kind of style. When I see them, I see my tomorrow in them. I see my kind of style, the things I like. When they do, when they do what they do, I see that this is what I like. This is how I like, how I like to pattern myself, because that's what is in me. Like when Jacob, I mean, when Mary met Martha, uh, is it Martha? Uh, when Mary met Elizabeth, as the baby lived, you know, there's a connection. When you sense that connection in in uh, in uh, in a foreigner, right? Sharply you connect. It might be by 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 uh, uh, keeping tabs on the person's uh, work, or what they do. You know, read more about them. Study if you have a contact one on one, fine. But if you don't have, keep read, reading until you get the contact. You understand? It's mentorship is very 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 key. So for you, who was who, who, who is that person? But now that I have, I have like um, like three, right? I, in Nigeria here, the man that. Fine, uh, uh, God don't give my God don't give my platform, right? And um, sometimes we even sound alike when we when we talk when when we do stuff because he's my he's my brother, right? Yeah, uh, but at that time there was someone I was looking up to. That is Alibaba. And when I decided to move into Lagos, if I from worry I kept calling him, you know. And when I started, I was like, bros. I need to see you. I need to learn from you. I need to drink from you. We kept talking on the phone. And when I moved into Lagos, he was the first man I, I contacted. And we saw, and he took me to, to his house. He shared a lot of things to me. Till date, Ali opens my head. Ali expands my mind. It's not about, it's not about you, you just um, having a mentor that will not speak into your life, that will not give you the, uh, let me worry about the tricks of the game. That will not teach you the trades of the game. No. A mentor will do all that for you. Right? So he, he did all of that for me. You know, took me through it. I said, and, and taught me the business angle of it. And taught me how to, how to be strong on stage. 
you know where my weak, weak weaknesses are my weak points are where my strength are what i should what i should um, uh, work hard on and all that he told me all that sometimes i'll go i'll say bros there was that i went to his house i saw him watching animal kingdom and i'm like bros what's this he said sit down job did this thing i was like how <laughs> i was like for fact i was i was i was really with laughs i was like bros what's it because i joke he says sit down the way when he started analyzing how the monkey was behaving to the to the lion it was it was now bringing it to the modern day nigeria you know i was on the floor he now told me when i saw his library his library was this place too small yeah, he a huge library he, he told me guy read wide think outside the box say jokes they everywhere so i look at everything from serious angle and also humor angle you understand at least one then two there is this great guy in the states roderick rice uh, uh, he's, a, he's a gospel comedian crazy funny witty out of this world very and when i sent him i see him you know doing his thing i follow him up on on, on on youtube follow him up on twitter and all when i see him doing his thing i was like whoa this is the kind of person i want to be like you know because I, I do a lot of church program too and i, and I see how we connect bible realities bring out humor from them and i whoa he's always hitting my head then the third person oh you all know him is martin lawrence martin lawrence is my dude i just i just love that guy it's crazy i've i've, I've watched him several times on you know his cds and all that def def jam comedy uh, uh def, def uh, comedy jams you know I, i've seen him perform you know and uh, I, I just see me in him when he when he anchors events and his guest shows, he, the way he delivers. I just love, and that is that is what I love. And and because of that, I, I want to feed more. I want to read. I, when I see, I, I I always want to watch his movies. Can I see his style when he's even acting and all this. Oh, it's my brother. Those guys are my guys. If I let you talk of mentoring, we will talk forever. But I want to stop you here. But I want to thank you very much for coming and sharing your time with us. I'm sure many people have seen another side of MCRB that they, know, that they have never seen before. Exactly. <laughs> I just want to let you uh, give us a joke. Ah, you joke you? Okay, a business joke. business joke. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, this is still your boy, MC Abbe, a.k.a. The Prof. All right? And um, I always believe that uh, Nigerians that Nigerians that will be left after rapture, that will be left behind after rapture, those guys they will frustrate the Antichrist because of, because of the kind of mindset that we have in Nigeria they will frustrate the Antichrist. You'll be shocked that before they release the mark six 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 in wherever they want to release it in Lagos here they will be selling the mark on that bridge with Gala. <laughs> Gala, yes, this is here. Gala, yes, this is here. They'll even tell you, now we have 12, 12, 12. This is the latest one. 12. Even the devil is looking for this one. It's 12, 12, 12. They will so frustrate that guy. The guy will just tell Jesus, come and help me, Lord. Help me, save me. You know, that's what's up. About the comedy industry from uh, the man in the industry himself, MCRB. Uh, you can reach MCRB for further information. If you are a comedian out there, you're an entrepreneur who wants to go into this kind of business, you can reach MCRB at www.mcrbentertainment dot com at mcrb1 is his hand handle on twitter i'm sure you follow him you you definitely get all the information you need from him thank you very much for joining us on today's episode i hope you learned something from it your passion must be able to drive you then money will follow yes. we've been talking business and my name is Shea Gumano. one of the advantages of the third world countries is that they are emerging they are dynamic you employ people what is the minimum wage that people are supposed to be paid for the kind of job they're doing Hello, welcome to Let's Talk Business. My name is Shigo Mano. And on Let's Talk Business, we look at how to build entrepreneurship, not just in Africa, but in the developing nations of the world. I urge you to join us here to watch Let's Talk Business weekdays on this station. Imagine.